Hello Year 7 and welcome to Lesson 3 of Week 12. So, so far we've read another extract from Oliver Twist, we looked at how we could write some paragraphs, and in this lesson we're going to be expanding some really simple sentences. These are the simple sentences, these ones here in bold. And as you see, they're really short. They're based on the previous extracts. And this is a great way of making sure that you've understood what we've read so far. Now you can see that if I wrote Oliver begged for more, he really wouldn't give me enough information, especially if the audience for this was someone who has uh, no knowledge of the book. Equally, if it was someone with expert knowledge of the book, like your teacher, they would also not find that very helpful because um, you're not showing them how much you understand. And that's important. You'll notice these questions are saying all the way down. It's up for you, I'm going to go through one with you, to see if you can work out how you would transform that into a helpful question. So, for example, Oliver begged for more. Well, who is Oliver? Would be a good start. So you might write an orphan. And what did he beg for more of? Oliver begged for more of what? Do you remember? Well, it was actually gruel. Do you get the idea? I'm going to go through the rest of these with you as an example and then how we turn them into a sentence. So bear with, when was this? Mm, wow. So he was a child. Uh, quite a young child. I think he's uh, probably no more than 11 or 12, so let's say. Where is he? Do you remember? He's actually in a workhouse. And why does he beg for more? Well, he is terribly hungry. So hungry that some of his friends say that they might end up eating each other. Uh, so hungry that they can't sleep. Uh, because they're, they're poor... The poor law has made it really hard for the for the orphans to survive, basically. And how does he beg for more? Do you remember who he asks? He asks Mr. Bumble at the copper, which is the big bowl, big bowl where they make it all. And he stands in front of Mr. Bumble, who's got the Got the ladle in his hand, he's been slopping out the gruel. Please, uh, I'm going to have some more. And we might also um, add to that, he drew the short straw. I don't know that I mentioned that before, but he was picked amongst the boys. Okay, so once you've done that first phase, how right, so we go using these solid lines on the right hand side to put those into a sentence. It's helpful to start with the who or at least put that near the beginning of the sentence. But, and remember, you don't have to include all of them and you need to make it flow. And ideally, it wants to stay as just one sentence. This might take you a bit of time, but it's well worth the practice. I might begin with Oliver, a starving orphan, in a, hmm, I didn't put Victorian, that would actually be really helpful, in a Victorian workhouse, comma, now I put comma there and there because I actually added that in between bit, there's extra information in the better clause. Starving orphan in the Victorian workhouse begged Mr. Bumble for another bowl of gruel. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful sentence. So we've gone from something that's so simple it's almost unhelpful to something that's clear, detailed, concise. Do you get the idea? It's not too tricky, is it? Okay, right. What I'd like you to do is have a go at the remaining ones and I will put together some answers to go through with you. Have a go.